we've been talking about. Okay? We've been talking about what functions are. All right. We've been talking about how to um, determine if something is a function. We've been talking about um, analyzing functions, meaning where are there zeros, where are there y intercepts, um, where are they increasing and decreasing, are they even or odd? Right. Um, we've been talking about the domain of functions, we've been talking about the range of functions. Okay. And what we want to be able to do and what we want to have happen is we need to be able to identify certain functions, no matter what. All right, so for instance, I think we all know what the equation y equals x is. All right, the equation y equals x is a diagonal line, um, and it was, you know, for the most part, something like that. So that's got to be y equals x. And obviously, we can draw it much better than after it with a graph data. Now, that being said, um, these types of functions that you guys need to be able to identify, all right, and just to give you an example, today in calculus, uh, we need to know what the graph y equals to absolute value of x minus 1 looks like. That is a, and you can't use calculus. That is something that you guys would need to have, that you need to have a good idea of what it looks like. You need to know exactly what it looks like? No, but you should have a good idea that of what it looks like when it's been shifted to the right All right. So these, there's eight of them. All right. And there's actually a few more, there's uh, 12 really, but we're not going to talk about all of them right now. Um, the, these eight that we're going to talk about are what we call parent functions. Okay. And parent functions are kind of, they, they are a family, family of functions um, so family of functions is a group of functions that graph like one or more similar characteristics. All right. So what that means is, to give you guys an idea, we can just go out of the room. The Anna family, everyone, everyone in there, they're not all the same. They're all different. But they probably all share, so there's probably something that they all share in common. Uh, it might not be exactly the same, but it's similar. Same as Paisley, same as Jim. If you go through all your families, all right, so that's who has a lot of siblings. All right, so those of you that, Delani, Sean, and Jericho, you guys have a lot of siblings. Okay, so the thing is this way your parents, all right, you, you all, all you and all your siblings have something in common with your parents. Whether they be their eye color, maybe their like, size, like if you're tall or small, or you know, what your face looks like. You all have something in common with your parents. But you're all different. Alright? It's the same thing with these functions. There's a parent function, which you guys will probably recognize when you see in here, where that parent function is sort of like your mom and dad. But then there's a whole bunch of, like, you could say baby functions, all these other, these other kids. And they they can create using those functions. They all look similar, but they're all different. All right. So they and again they may be different in what they look like based on size. They may be different based on like how like how high they go or how low they go. Um, how, if they go left or right, they're going to change. All right. So the parent function is what we call it's the most simple form of any function in a certain family. All right. And we our goal is to study and know eight of the most common parent functions. And that's what we're going to do today. All right. And the way we're going to do that is you guys are going to create. Um, you guys are going to create posters. All right. Each group is going to be responsible for two posters. There's eight of them. Um, I'm going to do two of them to give you an example of what these are going to All right. And then. Uh, to, and then the groups, you guys will volunteer for this. The two that I do on the board, you guys will take and put on the focus on. Alright? So, here we go. Now, you guys, what 
what you guys need to write down here, all right, is the name of the function. So the stuff that's highlighted in yellow, all right, and the form of the function, which is going to be the stuff that I'm not highlighting in yellow. So. Alright, and then I want you to draw a just a quick sketch of the map. Doesn't have to be perfect, but this one should be you know a straight horizontal line. This one should be that line, that type of line. I want you to draw each of those. Now, these are what we call linear and polynomial parallels. Alright, so the first type of function we have. Is a constant function. It is of the form f of x equals c, where c is any real number. So it might be 2, 3, pi, negative 5.34. All right? So it's just it's f of x equals c, where c is some real number. Its graph is a horizontal line. All right? And then that you don't really necessarily need to know. It says when c equals 0, f of x is a 0 function. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's called that. But to be honest, I just want you guys to know that it's a constant function. Okay? So if you ever see the graph of a horizontal line that looks like that, you should know automatically that it is a constant function. It's never increasing, it's never decreasing. Always constant. That makes sense. The next one we have is the identity function. It's the most, it's the first thing that you probably ever learned about. Why is when it came to functions? Why is it that? Probably the first graph you've ever seen. Alright? <coughs> this is the identity function. It says when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is negative pi, y is negative pi. It doesn't matter. You have the quadratic function. And that's probably something that you saw a lot of in math three, um, maybe a little bit in math one, and that maybe they change it a little bit. The quadratic function is f of x equals x squared. That's the parent function. There's all kinds of different functions that you can have that are quadratic. But the most simple quadratic function we have is x squared. It's that standard U-shaped graph. All right. It's probably the most common real-life problem or real-life function. Because anything you ever throw up in the air, or anything that ever you've thrown up, shot up, anything, it all travels in a quadratic, as a quadratic function. Right? If you see a U-shaped graph, it's probably looking at a quadratic function. Then you have the cubic function. F of x equals x cubed. Right? It has it's that still, I mean, you guys have seen that. Sure. What you'll notice about x cubed is it's almost, it's almost like it is supposed to be a quadratic function, and they took all these values and brought them out here. Alright. And you know what you guys have in this video? You good? So, we have some more. So those, those are the first four. The next two, and they, these fall underneath the square root and reciprocal parent function. Okay? The square root function is of the form f of x equals the square root of x. You guys have probably seen this that graph before. Um, Alright? So you have the square root function. Notice that there's no part of this graph right now in this parent function. There's no part of this graph that is over here with negative x i. Why would that be? Well, why 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 would there be no x i that has any part of this graph on it? Can't be square root of a negative number. 
The negative one, there's no y value associated with it because you can't take square root of negative. Negative two, same thing, you can't take square root of negative. But what you'll see is that we can move this around, we can change this parent function a little bit. Right? The parent function, you have the baby function, and then it's going to, then it could have that, that baby function, that new function could have negative x values that have y values associated with it. Just by way of change. Right. You have the reciprocal function. You guys are going to need to become really good friends with that because that's going to be a, a important function that we spend a decent amount of time on. Alright? It is of the form f of x equals 1 over x. Alright? That is a very important type of function. You'll notice that this is the, out of all the functions we've looked at so far, this is the first non continuous function. It is not continuous at x equals 0. It has what we call a vertical asymptote. Alright? So we'll learn all about these. Briefly talk about those, about the types of discontinuities in an infinite discontinuity. But we're going to talk a lot about vertical aspects. Alright? You good on this? Those, those ones. Almost. This is an important one to know what it looks like. Okay? Alright. Give me the last two. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you. Is this one not going to be the greatest integer parent function? Mm -hmm. uh, we're never going to work with this. It's there because it's there. It's a parent function. It's a good one. It's a good one. Oh, that's fine. We're never going to work with this. That's because that came out of the book. The book apparently. The book seems to like this function. I don't really care. Uh, they don't really know the point of it. Alright, so you have the absolute value function. Okay? If you know this looks like, you'll notice that on the absolute value function, right, so it's denoted, uh, so it's on the form, that's a small, that's uh, f of x equals Absolute value of x. Alright? Um, you'll notice that it's that D shape. You'll also notice that there are no negative y values. Why would that be? <coughs> what? Um, absolute value is always positive? Yes. <coughs> no matter what x value it is, you take the absolute value of it, there's never any negative y value. Now, again, that can change based on the new function that we create with the parent function. Um, greatest integer function, again, it's here, hey, that's cool, I didn't know it a little bit. Um, you know it looks like so if you see it, um, you see it. But again, uh, I'm not usually going to include that like, on a test here. Um, because to be honest with you, this class is very for AP Calc for your first Calc class in college. And calculus doesn't really deal with that function too much. Alright? So, questions about that? So, actually, I'm going to do this. Yeah, probably my least favorite function in the world is the greatest integer function. Yeah. All right. I am mad. This is more. Responsible 
So you guys are going to create posters, and on those posters, you have to list the problem. So on your poster, okay, what you need to include to get full credit is your group. Okay. First, is you guys gonna teach you guys gonna teach the class about these functions? I'm not I'm not teaching this. Alright. So what you need to include is you need to have a, a function written on there, obviously. Alright, we just wrote it down. So like in this example, and my on my post I probably put, you know, up on top the greatest error of your function and write underneath that have a max equals the function. Alright? You guys just wrote all that down. You need to have the domain of the function. You need to have the range of the function. Okay? You need to have where the y intercept is. You need to have all the x intercepts. Alright? You need to have your zeros. You can base this however you want. You can go, you can write on it y intercept equals whatever the point is. x intercepts are, and write out the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have the graph on it. Right. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Um, the graph has, well, you have that graph on it, but you still have to write out like what the line is or whatever. Yeah. So the graph has seven, so you have to talk about whether it's even or odd. Is the graph even or odd? What is it symmetrical about? Even is symmetric about the y axis, odd is symmetric about the origin. Okay? So you have to have that on it. Even or odd. And What's the symmetry? Okay. Is it continuous? Okay. One of them is not continuous. Everything else is continuous. If it's not continuous, I want you to tell me where it's not continuous. Okay. So continuous question mark question mark. Um. So you need to tell me its end behavior. Okay. The limit as x approaches infinity is what? The limit as x approaches negative infinity is what? Okay, you all know about that? Finally, you need to tell me where is this graph increasing and where is it decreasing? <coughs> Intervals. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is, I know you guys have graph and calculators and stuff. But you guys can choose. Do you want? So you should get your responsible to two graphs. Do you guys want to have the graphing calculator, or do you want to use logic? Calculator. Take it easy to me. All right. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a fast vote real quick. Mm -hmm. Raise your hands if you want to use. IPads. You'll be using calculators on Wednesday. Or not on Monday. So here's my expectation. Okay. So by okay, listen. By I'd probably say by 150, 2 o'clock is your absolute day. You should be done with your poster. My poster is 49 dollars. Okay. Now, at 2 o'clock, you're going to start presenting. While the other group is presenting, the other two groups are responsible for writing down the information about the function. Okay, so that being said, um, there we have you come up here. You guys here, you guys here. Let me, uh, I'm going to say one other thing before we get going. When you guys graph a function, all right, and I'm going to create, 
I'm going to choose, I'll do whatever the person does. I'm going to, I'll do the absolute value function. Okay, when you graph your absolute value function, all right, so you guys all know how to look at the table for a graph, right? Okay, when you graph this, I want your first one to graph that to be accurate. Okay, I will give you. I can give you graph paper, but I don't want you to draw like a small graph of this big. I want a big graph. Alright? So if I give you like graph paper, which is somewhere in this room, alright? I want to, well here, I'll just show you guys. Well, I'll show you a quick example of this. I want, first of all, your graph. I also want a table, an XY table next to the graph. Sign an art, calculator to make it for you. You get second. Hit second graph, it takes you to the table. I want okay, five, five, and then five, and then five. Well, let's do this is negative four, four. Negative, well, yeah. Um so, Check with me what I want you to do before you go to graph. Like if you have X cubed, so if you if your group doing X cubed um, or the cubic function, you're only going to go up to three. You can change three to three. If you have if you have the if you have what is all about it? Uh, yes, but here's another thing. Before you make posts, I want you guys to as a group work together. Write down your Post your information on the board so I can check it. That way you don't start making a post and mess up and then have a mess up post. Alright, that makes sense? Alright, so here's what we're going. Start here. Constant function, identity function, quadratic function, cubic function, square root function, reciprocal function. Make sense? All right. So, you guys now have 